Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel GSIPUC Mysuru. This is the 8th session of the 6th chapter oscillators. In this session, we are going to see what is called as crystal oscillators and triple phi timer. So, let us begin with our session with crystal oscillator. So, what exactly is this crystal oscillator? Crystal oscillators works on the principle of piezoelectric effect. Piezoelectric effect. So, according to this piezoelectric effect, when an AC voltage is applied to the crystal, the crystal starts vibrating at a frequency of the applied voltage. That is, whatever uh, the frequency of the applied voltage is, at the same frequency the crystal starts vibrating. Conversely, when the mechanical force is applied to a crystal in such a way that it starts to vibrate, then an AC voltage is generated. There are three substances uh, which exhibit the phenomenon of this uh, piezoelectric effect. Uh, those three substances are quartz, Rochelle salt and tourmaline. So, these are the three substances which uh, exhibit phenomenon of this piezoelectric effect. Out of these three, this Rochelle salt exhibit the highest piezoelectric effect, but uh, it is not mechanically strong. This Rochelle salt is used in the loudspeakers, microphone as well as headsets. Uh, coming to this tourmaline, uh, tourmaline shows the least piezoelectric effect, but mechanically it is very very strong. So, this quartz is a compromise between uh, the piezoelectric effect of the Rochelle salt and the strength of the tourmaline. So, this quartz is e easily available in nature and it is inexpensive. So, this is most widely used. So, the circuit symbol of a crystal is very very simple. It is having two metal plates between which the crystal will be placed. These are the two metal plates and the central portion is a crystal. So, this is the circuit symbol of a, a crystal. Now, let us see the AC equivalent of a crystal. The AC equivalent circuit of crystal uh, oscillator or a simple crystal. So, the AC equivalent circuit contains R, L and C in series which is in parallel combination with other capacitance which is denoted by C M. So, this is the AC equivalent circuit of a crystal where it contains R, L and C S in series and this series branch is in parallel with the capacitor what is called as CM. When the crystal is not vibrating, it is equivalent to only CM. CM is nothing but the mounting capacitance which exists between the two metal plates. But when the crystal is vibrating, the inductance L is the electrical equivalent to the crystal mass. L is electrical equivalent to the crystal mass and the capacitance CS is equal to the electrical equivalent of the elasticity and the resistance is the electrical equivalent to the mechanical friction. Whereas, Cm is nothing but the mounting capacitance. So, when the crystal is not vibrating, the, it is equivalent to only Cm that is mounting capacitance, but when the crystal is vibrating, uh, the inductance L is electrical equivalent to the crystal mass, the capacitance Cs is electrical equivalent to elasticity and the resistance is electrical equivalent to the mechanical friction whereas Cm is electrical equivalent to the mounting capacitance. This crystal is having two resonant frequencies that is series resonant frequency Fs and the parallel resonant frequency Fp and it is denoted by this. This is the series resonant frequency and this is the parallel resonant frequency. Whenever this crystal is used in an oscillator circuit, then the frequency of the signal will lie within 
एफ एस एंड एफ पी और लाई बिटवीन एफ एस एंड एफ पी नाउ लेट एस सी वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज दिस सीरीज रेजोनेस एंड पैरल रेजोनेस इन द सीरीज रेजोनेस फॉर सम डेफिनेट फ्रीक्वेंसी एक्स एल विल बी इक्वल टू एक्स सी एस एक्स एल विल बी इक्वल टू एक्स सी एस दट इज द रियाक्टेंस ऑफ द इंडक्टर विल बी इक्वल टू द रियाक्टेंस ऑफ द सीरीज के पास्टर दट इज द इलेक्ट्रिकल इक्वल एंड सर्क्यूट नली वी सो दैट वन ब्रांच विल बी हैविंग इंडक्टर रेजिस्टर एंड अ कैपेसिटर दट इज सी एस एल एंड आर which is in parallel combination with the capacitor which is named as cm so this is the electrical equivalent of a uh, crystal so in a series resonant at some frequency or at some definite frequency xl value will become xc and at this condition that is when xl is equal to xc is then the circuit will be called as a series resonant circuit and for this condition the impedance is very very low which is equal to r so whenever at some frequency the xl xc equal equate adaga the condition this condition is, will be called as a series resonant circuit and not series resonant circuit the impedance will be very very low and the impedance will be equal to r and the frequency at which the crystal behaves as a series resonant circuit is called as the series resonant frequency series resonant frequency which is denoted by fs and that fs will be given by fs is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi root lc coming to this parallel resonance circuit at a slightly higher frequency the net reactance of the series branch that is uh, the branch which which contains uh, r l and cs becomes inactive and that will be equal to the xcm that is x r l c s will be equal to x c m and the crystal now acts as a parallel resonant circuit and the impedance is very very high in this particular series sorry in this uh, parallel resonance and uh, the frequency at which the crystal behaves as a parallel resonant circuit is called as the parallel resonant a uh, frequency which will be denoted by fp and again it is given by 1 divided by 2 pi root lc where c is equal to or c equivalent is equal to c1 c2 divided by c1 plus c2 or cs cm divided by cs plus cm so this is all about the series resonant circuit as well as a parallel resonant circuit now let us see how this crystal will be implemented in an oscillator circuit in order to generate the oscillating signals so let us see the circuit diagram of a crystal oscillator the oscillator circuit needs two separate blocks one is the amplifier block the other one is the feedback block for the amplifier we are going to use a transistor in npn configuration so this is an rfc here we will be having the voltage divider resistors this is re r1 r2 this will be connected to plus vcc and here we will be having the ce capacitor which is in parallel with re that is nothing but a bypass capacitor and here we will be having coupling capacitors which is named as cc and the feedback path or the feedback block will be present here this is a crystal and here we will be having two capacitors let us name it as c1 and c2 and this is grounded this will be taken back as the feedback to to the base of the transistor this is the output voltage so this is a crystal so this crystal uh, contains two separate branch one is the series branch the other one is the parallel branch series branch and the other it contains r l and cs and the parallel branch only it contains cm so this is the simple block diagram what we are going to use in order to generate the electrical oscillations of desired frequency as we have already said r1 r2 and r3 provide a proper dc bias rfc is nothing but a radio frequency choke which isolates the power 
uh, supply from the oscillations at the collector and CE is nothing but the bypass capacitor, CC is nothing but the coupling capacitors. This crystal will completely act like an inductor when the frequency is slightly above than the series resonant frequency. This crystal is excited in the series resonant mode because it is connected as a series element as a feedback from the collector to the base. So this is the emitter terminal, this is the collector and this is the base. So 180 degree phase shift will be provided by the transistor as usual and another 180 degree phase shift will be provided by the capacitor divider circuit and totally there will be a phase shift of 360 degree which is very much important in order to generate the sinusoidal oscillations. So the output of this crystal oscillator will be an electrical uh, signal or an electrical oscillating signal uh, of desired frequency and uh, the frequency of this oscillating signals will be equal to F yes that is same as the series resonant frequency which will be given by 1 divided by 2 pi root L C that is C S. So this is the frequency of a crystal oscillator circuit that is which will be same as the series resonant frequency which is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi root L C S. Now let us see some of the advantages, disadvantages and applications of this crystal oscillators. Some of the advantages of this crystal oscillators is uh, it is having a high frequency stability and it can be used uh, as a reference for the measurement and comparison of one signal with the other signal that is uh, the frequencies of one signal with the other signal and the frequency can be changed easily by replacing the crystal and it is uh, unaffected by the change in the power supply or the, the change in the supply voltage or the temperature parameters. So these are some of the advantages of this crystal oscillators. Coming to the disadvantages of crystal oscillators, the change of the frequency of oscillation is not that easy. That is it cannot be changed appreciably that is one of the important point and they are very very fragile and hence it can only be used in low power circuits. So these are the major two disadvantages of this crystal oscillators. Coming to the applications of this crystal oscillators, it is most widely used in communication transmitters as well as receivers. In the modulation and demodulation chapter, we saw that we need a local oscillator in order to generate a separate signal whose frequency is intermediate that is intermediate frequency signal. I have signal and generate manake. So this can be used in such kinds of circuits. So that is one of the major application that is uh, it is used in communication transmitters and receivers, it is used in digital watch, it is used in clocks as well as calculators. So these are some of the applications of this crystal oscillators. Now let us move on to the next topic of this chapter that is thribble file timer. Till now we saw different circuits which are used in order to generate the sinusoidal signals that is uh, there are three three different categories of this oscillator circuits LC oscillator, RC oscillator and crystal oscillator. In LC oscillator we saw uh, two different types that is Hartley oscillator and Colpitts oscillator. Again in RC oscillator we are having uh, two types Winbridge oscillator and phase shift oscillator. Apart from that we also saw what exactly is this crystal oscillator. So all these circuits uh, mainly produced an electrical oscillation uh, which is sinusoidal in nature but sometimes we need non-sinusoidal signals also that is we need the square waveforms to be generated. For that kind we are going to use a single IC what is called as a triple phi. So this is triple phi IC uh, contains 8 different pins four on each side of the ICs. So this is called as a dual inline package IC. Now let us see the pin configuration of this triple phi timer. This triple phi IC contains eight different pins, four pins to the left and four pins to the right. One, two, three and four. This is pin number one, two, three, four. And here we are having four more pins to the right. This is 5, 6, 7, 8. So the numbering of these uh, ICs comes in the U shape 1, 2, 3, 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8. This is a triple phi IC. Pin number 1 is nothing but a ground pin, and pin number 2 is a trigger, pin number 3 is output, whereas pin number 4 is reset. 
Coming to this pin number 8, this is plus VCC that is the power supply which is required in order to turn on this IC that is triple five timer. Pin number 7 is discharge, pin number 6 is threshold and pin number 5 is the control voltage. So this is the pin diagram of a triple five timer or a triple five IC. Uh, which contains eight different pins out of which four pins will be to the left of the pin and other four pins will be to the left of, uh, to the right of the pin. So it is called as a dual inline package, dual inline package where the first pin will be the ground pin, second pin is the trigger pin, third is the output, fourth is the reset, eight is plus VCC, seven is discharge, six is threshold and five is the control voltage. The functions of each and every pin will be different. The very first pin is the ground pin and the voltages will be measured with reference to this pin that is pin number ground agaradrinda, pin number 1 is ground agaradrinda, all the voltages what we are going to measure that voltages will be with reference to this particular pin and the second pin is the trigger pin where the trigger pulse will be applied to this pin number 2 and it will be uh, equal to or uh, the output of this uh, triple five timer circuit will change if the voltage at this point is less than one third of VCC. We are going to see what exactly is that and pin number 3 is nothing but the output pin where the output of the triple five timer will be extracted from that pin and pin number 4 is a reset pin and we can reset this triple five timer by applying a negative pulse at this particular pin that is pin number 4. When we are not resetting this uh, triple five timer then this pin number 4 must be connected to plus VCC in order to avoid what is called as false triggering. Then plus VCC and nth head rate is nothing but the source what is required in order to turn on this triple five timer or in order to give the power for this triple five timer. And the pin number 7 is nothing but a discharge pin where the collector of the transistor will be given to this pin number 7 that is the transistor will be having three different terminals right collector, base and the emitter and the collector of the transistor will be connected to this pin number 7 which helps in saturating and uh, cutting off according to the output of the flip flop. Coming to this pin number 6 that is nothing but a threshold pin, even the input signal at this particular pin will help in changing the state of the output that is if the input applied to this pin is more than is greater than plus VCC then the output of the triple five timer will change. And coming to the last pin that is the control voltage, it is nothing but an external voltage which can be applied through this pin number 5 in order to control the frequency or in order to control the state of the triple five timer. This triple five timer is a non-sinusoidal oscillating IC and Theldanga. We can easily tell that it will generate the square waveform. Square waveform and Theldanga, it will have, it will be having only two different states. One is zero state, the other one is the one state. So in between if I want to change the state, state of the signal what is generated then I can easily apply an external voltage through this control voltage in order to change the output of the triple five timer. Now let us see the block diagram of this triple five timer. In the block diagram of a triple five timer, we are having different blocks. The very first block is a voltage divider block where we will be having uh, three number of resistors. Then comes the comparator block where we will be having two comparators which compares the input voltage and provides a an corresponding output voltage. Then comes the flip flop voltage, uh, flip flop block where we will be using SR flip flop that is set and the reset flip flop. Then comes the output block. So now let us try to understand the block diagram which contains all these types of different blocks. So the very first block is a voltage divider block which contains three number of resistors. So this is plus VCC and let us consider that the value of all these three resistors are equal to 5 kilo ohm. Now uh, we have to come up with the next block what is called as the comparator block which contains uh, three different uh, sorry two different comparators and each of these comparators uh, will compare the input voltage and produce a corresponding output voltage. So two comparators will be appearing here, one here and the other one here. So this is minus plus, minus plus, this is the threshold voltage and this is the control voltage. 
this terminal is shorted whereas this is a trigger input whereas this is ground that is pin number 1 this is comparator 1 and this is comparator 2 So the outputs of these comparators are connected to flip flop that is we are going to use a SR flip flop. The output of first comparator is uh, given as the input for the flip flop. So this is the S, this is the R and here comes Q and Q bar. This is uh, pin number 6, this is pin number 5 and this is pin number 2 and the output of this flip flop SR flip flop. Uh, let us mention it here it is a uh, SR flip flop is considered as the final output that is Q bar is the final output and Q is given as input for the base of the transistor and the collector output will be taken as the output which is nothing but the discharge this is pin number 7 and uh, plus VCC this is pin number Eight. This is pin number 8 and this is the final output that is equal to V0 which is equal to pin number 3. So this is a simple block diagram of a triple five timer IC which contains 8 different pins pin number 1, 2, 3 and pin number 4 is here which is nothing but a reset pin and let me call this as an output so one two three this is pin number four pin number five is control voltage pin number six is threshold voltage pin number seven is discharge and pin number eight is plus vcc and the transistor what i'm using here is a npn transistor so let us write it as a transistor so these resistors forms a voltage divider resistors. So the voltage at this point, the voltage at these points is equal to in the calculate mode. If I want to calculate the voltage at this point where below this point we are having two resistors and above which I am having only one single resistor. If I am going to consider these resistors as R, R and R. Uh, since each values are same I am considering it as R so the voltage at that point will be equal to uh, the total voltage that is uh, the source voltage VCC into this resistor 2R divided by sum of all these resistors 2R plus R so VCC into 2R divided by 3R so R and R gets cancelled so I will be left with 2 by 3 VCC. So the voltage at this point is equal to 2 third of VCC. Coming to this point, the voltage at this point is equal to below this point I am having only a single resistor and above which I am having two separate resistors whose values are same and theta ka. Below which I am having only single resistor, let me consider the value as R itself and above which R plus the sum of other resistor that is 2R. So VCC into R divided by 3R, R and R gets cancelled, so 1 by 3rd of VCC. So the voltage at this point is 1 by 3 VCC. So let us uh, call this as comparator 1 and this as comparator 2 and this is a flip flop which is nothing but an SR flip flop. So now we found out uh, the voltages that is 2 by 3 VCC and 1 by 3 VCC which will be appearing at this point. So what happens here is if the threshold voltage is more than the two third of VCC that is if the voltage what I am applying the threshold point that is pin number 6 and pin number 2 as well as this pin number 5 will be acting like a input pins where I can easily apply the input voltages. If the voltage whatever I am applying with uh, the pin number 3 is more than the two third of VCC that is uh, this comparator compares the voltage what is appearing from the pin number 6 and this point. So if the voltage what I am applying is more than two third of VCC then the comparator output or the comparator 1 output will be equal to 1. 
ಅದೇ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬಂದಾಗ ಇಫ್ ದ ಟ್ರಿಗರ್ ವೋಲ್ಟೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೆಸ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಒನ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ಸಿ ದೆನ್ ದ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾರೇಟರ್ ಟು ಔಟ್ಪುಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಸೊ ದ ವೋಲ್ಟೇಜಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಲೈ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ದ ರೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ಸಿ ಟು ಟೂ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ಸಿ ಇಫ್ ದ ಥ್ರೆಶೋಲ್ಡ್ ವೋಲ್ಟೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೂ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ಸಿ ದೆನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾರೇಟರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಔಟ್ಪುಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ and if the trigger uh, input voltage is less than 1/3 of vcc then the comparator 2 will produce a output of 1 suppose now let me consider that the threshold voltage is more than 2/3 of vcc and heldaga this comparator output voltage is or the comparator output is equal to 1 since the output of first comparator is uh, connected to s s is connected agiradinda that is equal to set ಸೆಟ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಕ್ಯೂ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ದ ಟೂ ಟೇಬಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನ್ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫ್ಲಿಪ್ಲ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕ್ಯೂ ಕ್ಯೂ ಬಾರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಆವಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಒನ್ ಸೊ ಜೀರೋ ಜೀರೋ ಇರುವಾಗ ಜೀರೋ ಜೀರೋನೇ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅಥವಾ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ನೆಗ್ಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾರ್ ವೆನ್ ಎಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಜೀರೋ ಆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ದ ಔಟ್ಪುಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಜೀರೋ ಕ್ಯೂ ಬಾರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಒನ್ when s is equal to 1 q r is equal to 0 and heltaga i'll be getting q and q bar in this particular uh, state so i am concerned with only these two states so when threshold voltage is more than 2/3 of vcc comparator one output will be high so the flip flop will be set this condition will be called as reset when q value is equal to 0 when q value is equal to 1 that condition will be called as a set condition so now when comparator output uh, is equal to high then this will be the set q1 i to antare what will be the value of q bar q bar value will be equal to 0 then the output voltage will be equal to 0 and the output will stay in the same position the or, or the output will say, stay in the same state until and unless the trigger input whatever i am applying is less than 1/3 of vcc now the voltage what i am appearing or the voltage what i am applying at pin number 2 is less than 1/3 of vcc anta tilkona avaga comparator output uh, the comparator the second comparator output will be equal to 1 second comparator output 1 i thon heldre then the reset of the flip flop will occur reset of the flip flop occur i thon heldre q will be equal to 0 whereas q bar will now be equal to 1 now the output of this triple phi timer has changed its state from 0 to 1 the output of flip flop will remain in the zero state until and unless whatever the trigger uh, input i am applying is less than 1/3 of vcc so like this it will swap from 1/3 of vcc to 2/3 of vcc and in the meanwhile i am be getting the output from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 which will help me in generating a square waveform so this is one of the non sinusoidal uh, signal or a non sinusoidal waveform which can be easily generated with the help of this triple phi timer and the transistor will uh, discharge through this uh, pin number 7 when q is equal to 1 q yavaga 1 agodu when s is equal to 1 when does this s will be equal to 1 when the comparator 1 output will be equal to 1 that is when the threshold voltage is more than 2 third of vcc only then the transistor will discharge through the pin number 7 so this is a simple block diagram with the help of which we can understand the working of this uh, triple phi timer and this reset bin can be uh, used whenever required if i want to uh, reset the flip flop whatever i am using then i can easily press this pin number 4 with the help of which the flip flop will be reset what is this control voltage and third right? this control voltage suppose i want to change the output at some other time and third right? i am having a continuous waveform or i am i am getting a continuous waveform but in between i if i want to change the state and third right? then i can up apply the voltage at the control voltage with the help of which i can change the state of the output from one state to another state so here i am having only two different state one is zero the other one is the one so i can easily change the state of the output in between by up here by applying the uh, voltage at the control voltage that controls the output hence the name control voltage so this is the uh, block diagram of a triple phi, triple phi timer now let us see the bistable 
multi vibrator. This is the simple diagram what we are going to use in order to construct a bistable multi vibrator. Bi stands for 2, so it contains 2 stable states. So, 2 stable states and here daga 1 is 0, the other 1 is 1. So, the output will not return to its previous state and the head both. And it will not continuously change its states from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 continuously. But we need to give an external triggering input in order to change its states from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. Suppose here I am having a, a output and here daga starting only 1 to suppose I want to change the states from 1 to 0 on Theldanga then I have to apply an external trigger only then its state will change and it will remain in the 0 state itself until and unless next triggering pulse is applied. If I am not going to apply any triggering pulses then the output will not change its state from one state to another state. In the by stable, the output will remain in its stable state in both the states, either uh, in 0 or in 1. Haga gidana by stable multi vibrator. So, we need to apply the tri external triggering pulses in order to change its output from one state to another state. So, by pulling the trigger momentarily to the ground, then the output is high. Then the output is high and then the output will be equal to 1. If the trigger input is connected to the power supply, then the output will be reset that is the output will be equal to 0. So, by changing the triggering state from ground to the voltage supply, then the output of the flip flop can be continuously changed from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So, this is the simple bistable multi vibrator which contains two stable states one is 0, the other one is 1. So, where do we uh, see the applications of this triple phi timers on the head? It is most widely used in the waveform generators that is the square waveform generators as well as in digital logic probes as well as DC to DC converters and burglar alarms. So, these are some of the applications of these triple five timers we are going to majorly use these triple five timers in the generation of the sinusoidal sorry in the generation of non sinusoidal signals that too in the generation of square waveforms so with this uh, the chapter 6 that is oscillators has been completed in my next session i'll be coming with a new chapter until then take care bye bye